Hi everyone, I'm Hong Kao, the project leader of the Induced Seismicity Research Project, which is part of the Environmental Geoscience Program. In this short talk, I will give a very brief summary of the scientific accomplishments that we have achieved during the year of 2019 to 2020. Next slide. Our project has a national scope with team members from four different regional offices. We have established close working relationship with both public and private sectors, including provincial and local governments, Quran corporations, professional organizations, and research universities. Our primary research objective is to address critical knowledge gaps in the understanding of induced earthquakes and to provide observation-based science to improve regulations on the development of unconventional hydrocarbon resources. I've listed four major accomplishments here. One, the development of innovative methodologies for detecting and location of small magnitude injection-induced events. The second one is the delineation of source characteristics of significant injection-induced events in BC and Alberta. Third, uh, we have uh, significantly enhanced the induced earthquakes monitoring for major shale gas basins in Canada. And finally, we have won the 2019 NRCAN Departmental Achievement Award. Next slide, please. Here, I list our key project members. In addition to GSC research scientists and supporting staff from three divisions, including Pacific, Ottawa, and Quebec, we also successfully leveraged a significant amount of external resources to help achieve our research objectives, including direct and indirect funding to support postdocs, research associates, graduate students, and co-op students. Next slide, please. This slide summarizes the awards and collaboration highlights during the year of 2019-2020. First of all, we have been given the NRCAN De Departmental Achievement Award for the impact of research and excellence in science. We also successfully won a, a research proposal competition to get a research grant from, research, from Geoscience BC with a total amount of more than 154,000 to support our injection-induced earthquake research for British Columbia. Earlier this year, we received a letter from the BC Oil and Gas Commission that acknowledges our success in establishing an automatic monitoring system for small magnitude injection-induced events in British Columbia. We have been working with many universities, organizations, and uh, uh, public and private sectors to densify the local and regional seismograph coverage for areas of active hydraulic fracturing injections and wastewater disposal operations. And we also conducted many joint research projects on various topics related to the source characteristics of injection-induced events and jointly published the research results with our research partners as papers, technical reports, conference and workshop presentations. Next slide, please. This slide demonstrates the tremendous efforts that we have been working with our partners to establish unprecedented seismograph station density in major shale gas basins in both West and East Canada. For West Canada, this figure shows the location of seismic stations in early 2013, before our efforts started. There were only two stations in the entire Northeast British Columbia region. By 2015, the station density has been dramatically improved with sufficient coverage for the Northeast British Columbia and Southwestern Alberta area, as shown in the middle figure. We continue to improve our seismic observation capacity and data resolution, specifically for the monthly plate near the Dawson Creek and the Fort St. John area. The, this right figure shows the distribution of seismograph stations by the end of 2019. 
a very dense seismic array is now in operation in the southern monthly area where all active hydraulic fracturing operations are performed nowadays in BC. It provides critical real-time induced seismicity monitoring information to regulators to help make timely regulatory decisions. For East Canada, we continue to collaborate with our partners in New Brunswick and Quebec to operate the regional networks there, as shown on these two maps. The purpose of keeping stations in the Maritime Basin and Gulf of St. Lawrence is to monitor small local earthquakes to establish reliable references of background seismicity for the region that can be particularly important when the provincial governments become interested in the develop development of unconventional oil and gas resources in the future. Next slide, please. On this slide, I list key scientific achievements that we have made in the past year. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go through all the technical details. However, all of them have been published externally as research papers, and they are all freely available from NRCAN's GeoScan database. I organized our achievements into two major categories, innovative methodology and targeted study of significant injection-induced events. For the innovative methodology, we developed a new method named seismicity scanning based on navigated automatic face picking, and SNAP for short. This new method is particularly powerful in automatic earthquake location of small events with very complicated occurrence pattern, such as clusters of events in both time and space. Another new method that we have developed is an automatic system for seismic phase identification and earthquake source location using deep convolutional neural network. This AI-based approach can significantly reduce our labor cost in locating the large number of small magnitude induced earthquakes in Western Canada. For the targeted studies of significant induced earthquakes, I list the four papers here. The first one is a detailed study of the ground motion characteristics and distribution caused by the November 2018 magnitude 4.6 earthquake in Northeast British Columbia. And this is the largest hydraulic fracturing induced earthquakes in Canada since 2016. The second one is a systematic investigation of dynamic triggering of large earthquakes in three major shale gas basins in Canada. We found that the passage of seismic waves generated by large earthquakes that occurred outside of Canada can remotely trigger local earthquakes in these basins. This observation suggests that many faults in those regions are critically stressed and very close to failure. The third one is a statistical study of the aftershock rate of injection-induced um, earthquake sequences in Northeast British Columbia. In this study, we found that the aftershock activity of large injection-induced events decays exponentially with time, similar to tectonic earthquakes, but the exact rate may be controlled by the operational parameters of nearby injections. The fourth one is a comprehensive study of regional stress field and earthquake pattern in the southern monthly plate. One key conclusion of this study is that the amount of pore pressure increase necessary to initiate shear dislocation on local faults by fluid injection has to be at least 4 megapascal with an average of 18 plus, uh, 14 plus minus 8 megapascal. And that wrap up my presentation. Here is my contact information. If you have any questions regarding my presentation today, please feel free to send me that email. Thank you for your attention.